Well, it's official. I'm now stuck in quarantine due to the inability of the American capitalist system to handle a pandemic. So what better way to spend my time than recommending you some anime? This will be my second time doing this, and unfortunately it's a bit too inconvenient to set up like a camera to record my beautiful face, but I'll be able to edit some more anime footage into this video. Unlike the last one, these shows aren't picked out because they're like beginner friendly anime. I mean, some of them definitely are, but as we'll see, we're getting into the weird shows right off the bat. Humanity has declined. Now this is very fitting for the setting we're in right now, but this is a post-apocalyptic like comedy where humanity has obviously been declining population has gone way down, and instead of humanity, there is this new fairy species who have been called like the new humanity. The main character of this show, who surprisingly we don't know her name, there's a lot of mystery of how this world came to be, but her job is the mediator, so that's kind of what she's referred to as in this show, and she mediates between the humans and these fairies. Now despite the adorable and like bright color palette, this show has a pretty dark sense of comedy, and that's why I love it so much. Like, the main character exhibits that she's willing to use violence to get what she needs, including manipulation, intimidation, she'll do all of that. And this is what makes her a very bad mediator between the fairies, because the fairies don't really have a sense of morality either. I mean, the main character knows what she's doing is wrong, but she doesn't care. The fairies, though, have no sense of morality, so it's just a really funny show, and it, you know, it critiques humanity as a whole. Like, one of my favorite scenes, I'll show the clip, but... The mediator tells the fairies that they can build their own nation on this deserted island they find themselves on. And here's what the fairies say that they should do. So yeah, I just think this show is a bit leftist because of how it critiques humanity. <laughs> and with the situation I'm stuck in, it's a great comedy. I think I'll rewatch it. It's great stuff. Zayanara Setsubo Sensei is another comedy show, but this time it's it's very Japanese, like a lot of the jokes are about specifically like wordplay, and a lot of the jokes just fly over my head because I do not understand Japanese to begin with. But that's kind of the appeal, it's, it's so out there and wacky. The main character is a Japanese teacher who constantly finds himself by like the way society is just illogical and, you know, exploitative and messed up, he finds himself in despair is constantly contemplating suicide, so a bit of a warning there, because this show is dark. Like, there, all the characters in this class, there's like a hikamori who's like locked in a room, there's one character who constantly comes into the classroom with like bandages on, and like the very first joke in the show is the most upbeat character in the show, like Kafka. The joke is her parents want to make themselves taller, but what she means by that is they want to commit suicide like the main character in this show, and the teacher has to explain to her what make taller means, and yeah, this show is something else. But this show is very clearly leftist because there's one particular skit where the char one character is looking at a Che Guevara t-shirt, and the character Chiri, is like the model student in the class, comes up to that student who's looking at the t-shirt and is like, starting at the t-shirt? You can't do that. So then there's this like long scene of Chiri educating. Um, this student on the Cuban Revolution and the role Che played along with Castro and it's, you know, it's pretty crazy. There's also like a Mao Zedong t-shirt as well and there's more little references like that. I also like that one scene where we meet the character Commodore Perry who is the American naval captain who opened up Japan and he's just portrayed as this lunatic who wants to just open everything. <laughs> it, like, he just opens a door, he just opens books, he just, it's a crazy comedy show so. I definitely recommend it, if, it, if that sounds up your alley. With the second season of The Promise Neverland on the horizon, you know, I just want to recommend The Promise Neverland. It's just a great show. The first season is about the kids escaping from this farm. Uh, it's disguised as in, like an orphanage. They, all these orphans are here, but they learn that, no, they're actually commodities for this demon species to eat, since they're like a luxury food item. My video on the subject, Eat the Rich Before They Eat You, does a very good breakdown of this dynamic. But I'm just really excited for the second season, because obviously the first season is them just escaping from that. The first season involves like a lot of mind games between the characters and their nanny who is trying to make sure they don't escape. It was pretty psychological and it was great. But the second season is going to dive right into kind of some guerrilla warfare. Yeah, they escaped and are now being hunted by demons, and they're gonna get guns and they're gonna fight back. They're obviously overpowered by the demons like pure strength and 
abilities that far succeed humans, but you know, they still have their ingenuity in minds. That's all I have to say. I mean, I've already talked about this at length. So another show in the similar vein of like guerrilla warfare and a militant cadre fighting against evil is the show Akame Ga Kill. A lot of people watch the show and just wrote it off as just like way too edgy. A lot of the characters die in the show. It's a lot like Game of Thrones in that regard. But thinking about this show, it was incredibly leftist. The anime has some flaws, I will admit. That it has like an anime original ending, but from what I can tell, the manga definitely seems worth reading. The show's main character Tatsumi is from a peasant village, and he goes to the Empire looking for some job opportunities to support them, specifically in the military it seems. But he gets sidetracked in the first episode, finds himself at some like bourgeois mansion, and apparently these are rich people, they just like, for fun, like there's no reason for this, for, but for fun, they take his friends hostage torture them, basically murder them, and yeah, immediately the dynamic of this show is class against class. Tatsumi finds himself now in Night Raid, which is a cadre of militant, you know, guerrilla fighters, um, which is built on like this anti-fascist philosophy. They want to take the empire down. I'm not gonna lie, some guillotines come out in this show, so yeah, that's, that's hype. So this show is a lot about like fighting the police force, assassinating the aristocrats. Uh, it's a good time. And like, the demands of Night Raid are just very progressive. Mine, the character, wants to open the borders because she was like an immigrant and discriminated against. So there's like this very racial purity thing in the Empire, of course, which she wants to destroy. This show is very critical of the police as there's this like squad called the Jaegers. And there's this really crazy character on the Jaegers called Seru who wants to uphold justice so much that she will just murder anyone who does not fit her definition of justice. She is just so much from the thin blue line camp. And yeah, she gets she gets murdered by Night Raid, of course. Uh, no secret there. But yeah, crazy. And that's not even the weirdest part. There is another group in this more detailed in the manga called Wild Hunt. And they're a secret police of the Empire. And these secret police are so brutal, I can't even describe what they do. Like, they're so brutal that the, even the Jaegers are deciding that these wild hunt people are criminals by their logic. So that's that's how like above the law these secret police are. So yeah, what, what a leftist show. A peasant farmer Tatsumi looking for work in the kingdom, dragged into a protracted people's war. My friend Zolo has been pointing it out, but this show just screams nihilism. One of the characters in this show is named after a Soviet tank, Bulat. And he tells Tatsumi that, you know, this is not gonna be an easy time. Some of them might not even survive this. And that's also in line with Mao Zedong's quote, that the revolution will not be a dinner party. So I definitely recommend Akame Get Kill, if uh, this love of Edge sounds kind of fun to you. In the last recommendations, I recommended Kaiji. And yeah, Kaiji is an amazing show about the ultimate gambler fighting against like rich people. But Tonegawa Middle Manager, which is a comedy set in the Kaiji versus I should call it, follows the perspective of, yeah, a middle manager who is trying to like kiss ass to his boss, who, the present Hyodo, who is just like the stereotypical evil capitalist. So yeah, we're following the perspective of this middle manager, and we're just seeing that like the machinations of capitalism at work, what this company actually does of black suits, through like a humorous perspective, and it's like really revealing of Japan's work culture. I mean, what other comedy is about a middle-aged businessman managing his workers, trying to like keep them in line, keep like the efficiency and effectiveness of the business? We see like his hiring policies. There's a bit of subtle commentary about women in the workforce, just subtle, but it's there. And this show just has like some comedy you really won't see anywhere else. Like, it's about like mundane things that you might think of and just like hiding them up to levels of absurdity. Like the first episode, Tony Ga was trying to remember all of his employees' names. And all of them are like these black suit employees who kind of look alike. There's very few distinguishing features since they have like a uniform code. And some of their names sound alike. And this is tightened up to like the extreme. And I do really recommend you watch Kaiji before this since Kaiji is kind of an essential parallel to the show. And they're having boardroom meetings planning out how they're going to like make the scenarios that happen in Kaiji. Such as like death games. They're planning death games with powerpoints in the show, and it's just hilarious. So while this show is, like, pretty absurd, like, what business is playing death games in a boardroom meeting? But it's so accurate. Tonegawa having to suck up to his president, otherwise he might get fired, therefore he's strictly disciplining his black suits, 
trying to keep them in line. Like, some people just get fired for doing the wrong thing, and yeah, like, that's just what happens. Like, there's this one scene where he, like, talks about sending some employees off to, like, some deserted island where one of the company's businesses is. And, like, they're opposed to this. Like, they realize that, like, they're getting the short end of the stick here. They're probably unlikely to get promotions. But Tony Garba convinces them that they just work hard enough, they'll get that promotion and they can move to a different branch. So this show is just, like, such an interesting parallel to Kaiji, which is, like, this intense thriller show about gambling and life or death scenarios. But then Tony Gawa Middle Manager is just like this slice of life comedy. And this is just everyday Japanese life. And the fact that these two exist in the same universe and comments on each other is astounding. <laughs> and like, yeah, it really comes through like the critique Kaiji is trying to make about the capitalist system. So yeah, if you've seen Kaiji, I recommend this one so much. In the same vein, we have Black Lagoon. And the first episode is about a Japanese businessman, Rock. And he's betrayed very quickly by his company. He is sent to deliver this disc to like this war-torn country with like nuclear secrets. And he's intercepted by these pirates who take him hostage, take the disc. And surprisingly, he begins to sympathize with these pirates. Uh, he calls it Stockholm Syndrome in the show because he feels like in this first episode, the only person he can trust is Dutch. But this kind of makes sense as his company is completely willing to just throw Rock away. When he gets in contact with them and tells them about, you know, being a hostage who needs to be ransomed, you know, they tell him that, like, once he's free, he should disappear into, like, the South China Sea, never come back, and they'll plan a funeral for him in Japan where they'll promote him. So, hooray, what an accomplishment. So, Rock throws away his Japanese business life, tells his boss off, who's basically indifferent and considered him disposable the entire time, and he joins the Black Lagoon company. So Black Lagoon is basically lumpen proletariat, this show. I mean, got a very colorful cast of characters. We have Boa who runs this mafia called the Hotel Moscow, and it's basically a cadre of ex-Soviet soldiers. Then we have the characters in Black Lagoon itself. Dutch is likely in this show a Vietnam War defector, and we see him reading Mao Zedong's Little Red Book in this show. Revy, I think she's just really cool. I mean, that's all there is to say about her. So Black Lagoon is a pretty good action show. Since it's dealing with like the criminal underworld and stuff like that, there's some pretty dark stuff that happens. But it's really fun to see like these ex-Soviet soldiers in the Mafia portrayed as like the good guys in this show. And like the Black Lagoon mercenary group is also just the protagonist. This show is just incredibly anti-capitalist, anti-fascist. And that's why I gotta recommend it. So this was a bit of a shorter recommendation list, but I realized my last recommendation for this video has such a great potential to be its own separate video, so I'm gonna think about that a bit more. And since I'm in quarantine, that should actually come out some pretty soon, so look forward to that. Remember to subscribe and ring that bell so you see when that video comes out as soon as possible. The last video, people left comments that were recommending other anime that I didn't mention, and I'd love to see that again. There were some pretty good shows mentioned. A few of them got included in this video, and it'd be fun to see another discussion around those types of shows.